All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the fourth part of the show, we're going to talk about some comments made by Cam Newton recently on why he believes Lamar Jackson is the greatest dual-threat quarterback of all time. So I'll talk about what he had to say, and I'll give you my thoughts uh, on the matter. So this is what Cam Newton had to say. Um, He was asked whether he believes... He's the greatest dual-threat quarterback of all time. And he said, no, he believes it's Lamar Jackson. And he said, Lamar's style is different than mine. He's got big plays, any play. He's got speed that I never had, and he's just a legend. And then I played the game more powerful. I can run. But I'm going to probably get caught. Vic, Lamar, they, they aren't getting caught. And Michael Vick currently holds the record for rushing yards by a quarterback with 6,109 uh, Cam Newton sits in second um, with 5,631 rushing yards. Russell Wilson has 5,300 yards rushing, and then Lamar Jackson has 5,200 yards rushing. A little over that. And if Lamar Jackson hits a career average of 876 rushing yards a season, he would overtake Michael Vick in 2024. Um Lamar will basically get that record. And that's the one guy that also gets thrown into is Michael Vick. Now, I never saw Michael Vick play. Well, I shouldn't say that. I never saw Michael prime Michael Vick play because, you know, you had his playing career with the Falcons, and he was dynamic. But then, of course, there was that period where he was not around. I'm not going to get into that, but we, you know, we know what happened. After that, then he came back into the NFL – and he was with the Eagles, you know, he was the, well, right, he, he backed up Donovan McNabb for a little bit, I believe, and then took over as a starter, or I think him and McNabb were at least teammates for one year, and then McNabb left, um, but then Michael Vick took over as a starter, um, I know Kevin Cobb was mixed in there somewhere, I, I could be getting, I, I could be wrong um, with McNabb and Vick being teammates, but I'm pretty sure they were, but Vick took over as a starter whether it was from him or Kevin Cobb. And the Eagles did make the playoffs in 2010, and that was the year that Aaron Rodgers won his one and only Super Bowl. They played each other in the first round. Um, So, uh, yeah. And then 2011, that was the year where Vince Young was the backup, and he said that the Eagles were like this dream team, and they ended up just having a really bad season. Um, 2012, you know, the Eagles, I don't think... Yeah, they didn't make the playoffs in 2012. And then... 2013, that was when Nick Foles took over as the starter from Vic, because I think Michael Vick got hurt. And then, uh, yeah, that was basically it. You know, then he kind of bounced around a little bit. He was a backup to Geno Smith, and then he was with the Steelers for a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, um, that was kind of how Michael Vick's career went. But when he was with the Falcons, that was like, that was his, those were his prime years. But, um, now, when it comes to him, Lamar Jackson, and Cam Newton, like I said, I really didn't, I didn't see him prime Michael Vick. So I'm really only going to talk about, you know, who I saw. And, you know, Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson, different styles. I mean, Lamar Jackson and Michael Vick had similar styles. Yeah, Cam Newton would just bulldoze over people. I mean, if you remember from his MVP season, um, there was that game against the Falcons, which actually ended up being their first loss of the year. Um, cause you know, they were trying to go undefeated, you know, Cam Newton was dragging like f- four people to pick up a first down. And, um, you know, there was that other play against the Texans where, you know, he got, he was running and then he f- did a, f- a flip into the end zone for a touchdown. Um, prime cam was, uh, really special and, you know, unfortunately for him, you know, injuries caught up to him. You know, it, it, it just, uh, but it really had a lot to do with the punishment that he um, dealt with while playing because, yeah, he was a big guy that he just was, he would just bulldoze over people and that eventually caught up to him. You know, that's why his shoulder, you know, ended up giving out and he really couldn't throw anymore. You know, I mean, the final, his final year was 2021 when he went back to the Panthers because if you remember, he started with the Patriots in 2020 then they drafted mac jones and they ended up cutting cam newton and then he went back to carolina 
and the Panthers kind of needed another quarterback. Played a little bit, but, you know, just was not the same player that he once was. But, you know, a lot of that had to do with injuries. He dealt with a lot of injuries. You know, 2019, he played, I think he only played in two games that season. And it's unfortunate because he was a good player. It's just, you know, injuries got the best of him. And that's what I kind of worry about with Josh Allen because Josh Allen, he's got that similar style to Cam Newton where he's got that breakaway speed. I mean, we saw that in the playoff game against the Steelers. But, yeah, he also bulldozes over people too. So I worry about Josh Allen kind of dealing with the same, um, you know, kind of having the same fate as Cam Newton. But we'll see. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But now in terms of the greatest dual threat quarterback, I mean, again, different styles with Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. Like, yeah, Lamar Jackson has breakaway speed that Cam Newton didn't have, but Cam Newton had some big runs too that went for touchdowns. So, um, yeah, it it is tough to say because, you know, I, I, I don't really... For, for me, I don't really know who I would take. I mean, I guess I would lean towards Lamar Jackson um, because of that breakaway speed. I mean, I, I thought he was going to take it to the house in the playoff game against the Chiefs where, you know, that ball got batted up in the air and he caught it. He caught his own pass, and I thought he was going to take that to the house um, if he didn't get tackled from behind. And then there also earlier in the game on that fourth down play, I thought he was going to take that one to the house too. Um so, yeah, I mean, Lamar Jackson has had some big runs. I mean, also, um, you know, I was watching the... Because uh, the NFL uh, Insta, NFL YouTube channel has been posting, um, you know, highlight reels. They, they they posted one. It was like an hour of AFC North highlights from, like, 2016 to this year. And, you know, of course, Lamar Jackson... You know, has some highlight plays in there. Of course, there was when Kevin Harlan called him Houdini, that play, uh, that rushing touchdown against the Bengals. Um, that was impressive. You know, the spin move that he had in that run. So yeah, I, maybe I'd lean towards Lamar Jackson. Um, but different styles. You know, Cam Newton bulldozed over people. Like I said, I brought up the play against Atlanta in the regular season when they uh, when they went 15 and one, where he's just dragging people for that first down. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't think you're wrong with whoever you decide, whether you think it's Cam Newton or whether you think it's Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, Cam Newton's career got cut short because again, injuries. Um, and you're hoping that Lamar Jackson, that doesn't happen to him either because he has dealt with injuries. You know, um, last year he stayed relatively healthy, which was great to see. Um, you know, the, the previous two seasons, you know, you saw how important Lamar Jackson was to the Ravens because 2021, it looked like they were going to make the playoffs. He gets hurt. That ended up not happening. They still made the playoffs in 22, but you had Tyler Huntley starting at quarterback. And the Ravens could have won that game but against the Bengals, but that didn't happen. And then what happens when Lamar Jackson's healthy? This team makes it to the AFC Championship game, and they're the number one seed in the conference. So, it really, it goes to show you how important he is to that team. Um, So, like I said, I I hope he, you know, he has a long career, and already he's got two MVPs. You know, he's already got more MVPs than Cam Newton. And Cam Newton rightfully deserved that MVP in 2015, but now Lamar Jackson's got two. And, you know, they're kind of hoping for, you know, bigger things now this year. You know, they're trying, they're hoping that they can get to that Super Bowl because that's what Lamar wants. You know, he wants that. Um, But are they going to be able to do that is the question. And Cam Newton, when he went to the Super Bowl, I mean, that Denver defense was special that year. No fly zone. Uh, they were unbelievable that year, and they were unbelievable in that game. Um, you know, they they made that Panthers offense look small. And Cam Newton was throwing to guys like Philly Brown and Ted Ginn Jr. I mean, they really didn't have... Uh, you had Greg Olson, who had a really good year. But, you know, those receivers did not scare you. 
But Cam Newton made them look really good. Um, you know, and they got to the Super Bowl with those receivers. Because if you remember, Kelvin Benjamin, uh, he was there. Um, he, he missed that whole year because I think he tore he tore his ACL. I forget what the injury was specifically. But, yeah, 2014, he had a good rookie season. He was their number one receiver. He gets hurt. So they didn't even have him. Um, but, yeah, that offense with Cam Newton was uh, was special in 2015. I, I forget who else. Was. Oh, Devin Funchess. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Stewart running the football. I mean, I forgot about these guys. But, um, but and then they were also backed up by a good defense as well. Um, but, yeah, they just ran into a really good Denver team. Or, well, at least a really good Denver defense, uh, an historical Denver defense because the offense was not good. Um, the Broncos, I, I, I mean, I'm assuming they had the best scoring defense that year because, you know, they were getting pick sixes like crazy. I mean, and they and they had a, a touchdown in the Super Bowl that made a big difference. Um, you know, Von Miller uh, strip-sacked Cam, and then um, Malik Jackson scored the touchdown there. So, yeah, um, that was the closest Cam Newton got to winning a Super Bowl. And, um, you know, he didn't get close any close any any closer after that. But, um, yeah, for Lamar Jackson, he, you know, he's still got a shot. So we'll see if he's able to do that. And the Ravens still got a very good team, and we'll see what they do in 2024. But, yeah, this is uh, it is an interesting uh, debate. Now, for some of the older fans, they're probably going to lean towards Michael Vick, um, which I don't have a problem with at all. Uh, I, I think, again, it's, it's tough to say between Cam and Lamar Jackson. Um, again, Lamar Jackson has the two MVPs. Um, Cam Newton's got a Super Bowl appearance, um, but I, I don't think you could go wrong with whoever you choose. Uh, I, I, I think with the breakaway speed, I mean, I'd probably lean towards Lamar, but again, Cam Newton had some big runs in his career. It's not like he never did. It's just not, not up to the, the speed that Lamar Jackson uh, can get up to. So it's an interesting debate. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't really, I don't feel strongly either way. Um, I think you can make a case for either, um, but right now, I, maybe I, I, I would lean more towards Lamar at this point. But let me know what you guys think. Who do you think is the better dual threat quarterback? Is it one of these two guys? Do you think maybe it's a guy, well, I did mention Josh Allen. Do you think maybe it's Josh Allen? Do you think it's Michael Vick? Um, or is it someone I did not mention? Let me know in the comments. Because like I said, it is, a, uh, it is an interesting conversation to have. So we're going to take our final break of the show here. When we come back, we'll talk about Joe Burrow. You know, some com more comments he made on staying healthy for the 2024 season. So we'll get into all that um, to wrap up the show. So for one final time today, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast.